All right, y'all, I'm going to be real with you. My camera's been acting weird lately, so I actually did do a preview or a predictions video, but for some reason it didn't work. So I didn't want to put it up because it made it made the whole thing look weird. But regardless of that, I did see the Rumble. I just got done watching the Rumble, but I will be real with you here. I did not see the championship match because it was so doggone boring that I fell asleep. And I missed part of the Royal Rumble up to number 14, but I ended up seeing the rest. But let's get started with the opener. My goodness. Daniel Bryan versus Bray Wyatt was one of the best openers in a pay-per-view that I have seen in a while. Like, that was practically an awesome, sheer awesomeness in a bottle kind of match that I've ever seen. Seriously, it was awesome. Like, I love this because it definitely showed how Bray Wyatt is on his own. He don't need his minions. He can handle his business on his own. And I'm happy that the, I'm happy that the authority made a good booking decision by allowing Bray Wyatt to win because Bray Wyatt needs this win more than Daniel Bryan does. We all know that Daniel Bryan is way over. And not only that, we all know that the crowd was expecting Daniel Bryan to be there in the Rumble. But I kind of had a feeling he wasn't because he was already booked in a match. That's com com just extremely grueling to be booked for a Royal Rumble match as well as another match. And let's face it, there's no way that the authority is going to allow Daniel Bryan to even be the face of WWE until he shaves his beard and cleans himself up. But they don't want to do that. So, hey, he's not going to be the face. But they're going to put him in a really great match where he really will showcase his talents as well as Bray Wyatt. I'm happy that Bray Wyatt won. And I'm happy that this is going to probably continue on down to WrestleMania, which it should. Because these two guys really need to have their, their uh, WrestleMania moment. They never had. Sure, Daniel Bryan put on an awesome match between him and Sheamus at WrestleMania 27. But we all know what happened there. It was a dark match. It wasn't even seen. He also had a Wrestle twenty, uh, a WrestleMania twenty eight match. Um, uh, uh, that he had that was like what fifteen seconds, sixteen second match against Sheamus. And he ended up losing. Regardless of that, he lost, and it was embarrassing. He never really had a true WrestleMania moment. And if he can have his WrestleMania moment against Bray Wyatt, have it. That's all. It's book it. Please do. He may not be able to be champ, but at least he'll have a decent WrestleMania moment with somebody that needs to be on screen a lot more than Daniel Bryan does. All in all, awesome match. I actually um had a chance to see the the uh the kickoff. Disappointing. Very disappointing. Why in the world did you give the tag team championship belts to New Age Outlaws, knowing that they're not gonna be there that long? Why? They're vets. We all know that vets are not going to be around that long. They're going to disappear in a matter of months. So why give them the belts if we know that their time there is going to be short? It doesn't make any sense. Seriously. They should have kept it on Cody and Goldust for a while until they fought the Usos and then have the Usos take the belts off of them. But I have a gut feeling that the Usos are going to fight the New Age Outlaws and they're going to end up taking the belts off of them anyway. But that's their choice. Whatever. I absolutely have no idea who won a championship match. So that's something that I'm going to have to look forward to on Raw, as well as those that did not watch it, because I did not see it. It was so doggone boring, waiting for them to even pump it up, that I fell asleep. I did. It was straight up boring. Like, come on, dude. Why are you being so slow? He knocked out your freaking dad. Put on some aggression for crying out loud. Come on, Cena. Knock him the frick out. Why did you just do that? It was, it just took so freaking long. I just couldn't, I couldn't keep my eyes open. I literally fell asleep and I ended up waking up seeing number 14 coming out uh, during the rumble. But I will say this, I actually looked it up on Twitter and I found out that my number five was corporate freaking Kane. Why did I have to have corporate Kane? That's extremely disappointing. And also it makes no sense at all. Number one, the guy is a corporate guy. He is now with the authority. If Kane can get in the Royal Rumble, how come Triple H couldn't? Why? Is it because he's a COO? They don't mean anything. The fact that he's part of authority, he's actually able to be in the Rumble, the Triple H should do the same freaking thing. But then let's be real. If Triple H was actually in the Rumble, he would have beaten Batista. Triple H has that big of an ego. He would never allow himself to lose or be tossed over. Come on now. Now, I will say this. I have been wrong. I don't think, I, before I would always be able to guess it down the middle to know who was going to be what number. And I was really surprised if Batista wasn't number 30. But I guess number 30 is supposed to be that mystery number, that unknown number that you have no idea who's going to be making the return. And it was probably the most bland, most mediocre return I've ever seen in my life. Rey Mysterio at number 30. 
Really? From all the people that you could have picked, you picked Ray Ray? I would have I would have booked him at 28 or 29, but it was a random number. He picked 30, I suppose. I really don't feel that it was random. I really don't feel that half of the Royal Rumble numbers were random. And honestly, half the numbers, the people that actually did pick, didn't care about. The only person I really cared about was Sheamus. I was so happy to see Sheamus make his return because it was so freaking long. But the only problem is everybody was so focused on Daniel Bryan coming out that it really did kind of take take the energy away from the Royal Rumble itself. I know everybody is hyped up, uh, hyped up about DB, and they wanted DB to come out and, like, clean house. But let's be real here. It ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. I know that Daniel Bryan is the most relatable character in the WWE Universe right now. But let's face it, they're not going to listen to the WWE Universe. They're not going to have some scraggly guy that looks like he's Paul Bunyan's brother coming out representing the company. If you were actually, and, I'm, and I hate to say this, but if you honestly think about it, if you were the CEO of a major company that's international, would you want somebody like Daniel Bryan representing you? No. Let's be real here. If you really, and it, just because you you cut your beard up, just because you cut your hair, don't mean you can change yourself or change your attitude. And Daniel Bryan refuses to cut his hair. He refuses to shave his beard. So he's not going to be the corporate guy. I mean, he's not going to be the, the face of WWE. That's it. He's not saying change your personality, or maybe that they are, but that's the part of the storyline. The thing is, is that he's not going to choose to clean himself up for the company, so he's going to be where he is. It's not because he's 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 not a great superstar. It's not the fact that he's not relatable. He is, but it's just how he looks. If he actually changed his look, who knows? They might change their mind, even though it's kind of messed up, the fact that you have to literally change your entire face, you know, to be a part of the company, but they're just asking him to clean him up. But I'm going to be real here. If I was actually part of a CEO company, I wouldn't like make it hard for him to, to move up. But it will be difficult to have him kind of represent your company looking like I, looking like Paul Bunyan's brother. I mean, come on. You got to clean yourself up, man. You, it, seriously, you got to represent who you are. And if you're good, if you're great and talented, what's wrong with cleaning yourself up? I still think DB is an awesome wrestler. I'm not going to lie, but I wouldn't want him to represent my company looking like that either. And I already said that about a million times, so I'm not going to go into that anymore. But I know that the crowd was not happy. And after Daniel Bryan not even coming out at number 30, it sucked all the energy out of the match. It really did. I enjoyed myself. I really did enjoy myself watching the Royal Rumble, but it made me really sad that the crowd didn't. I mean... They were so focused on Daniel Bryan not being there that they didn't really care much for the match. And it was kind of messed up. It was a really good Royal Rumble match. But I will say this. I'm going to find out who the champion is. Actually, if you know who the champion is, leave a comment in the comment section below because I really do want to know. But here's my theories here. If John Cena ended up being the champ, that means that John Cena is not going to go after the streak, which I don't want him to. Because they're doing, they're doing their best to make John Cena, like, the, the best face there is. His reputation is starting to come back up again. If he goes against a streak, that means that his reputation is gone for at least three or four years. Nobody's going to forgive that man if he, puts, if he puts Taker down. Seriously, he don't need to put Taker down. He needs to be focusing on being a champ or going towards trying to be a champ. Now, the person that I really want to go against a streak is Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is the best candidate. The reason why I'm saying this is, is, is it like this. The guy is the strongest guy on the shield. We all know that he pretty much let his friends know that I'm going to take you out regardless. We're in, the, we're in the rumble. It's every man for himself. He took his friends out. He, he's pretty much the best anti-hero around next to CM Punk. He can handle the brunt. He can. Not only that, he's cousin to The Rock. And that's also another thing that they can handle the storyline they really wanted to. But honestly, it should be Roman Reigns against the Taker at WrestleMania 30. Book it. Do it now. But regardless of that, my overall thoughts of the Rumble is I actually, I, I really did enjoy the Rumble. I really did enjoy it. It was absolutely interesting to watch, except for the championship match. It was downright boring, and I actually did fall asleep. But overall, it was a great pay-per-view. I will say this, you know, with the whole Batista thing, they didn't make it to the point where he cleaned house, but they kind of did, you know, make everything even. 
But I will say this, it was an enjoyable pay-per-view to watch, and I suggest anybody that wants to watch a pay-per-view, go ahead and watch it. It's a great pay-per-view to watch. You shouldn't crap on it because DB wasn't there. You shouldn't crap on it because Peace was out there. You gotta take it as it is. It was a good pay-per-view. The way they booked the matches was really good. We actually had a championship to change hands for some strange reason, but Bray Wyatt versus Daniel Bryan was an awesome match to watch and a great opener to start off the show, as well as... Well, the Royal Rumble match itself. It was interesting and very fun to watch. I ended up seeing Sheamus come back. We ended up seeing uh, Big B Big Daddy Diesel him come back. We ended up having we ended up having two debuts at night. We probably had more, but I can't freaking remember. I think somebody from NXT came out. Uh, but honestly, it was a really great Rumble match besides the championship match. And I want to hear y'all's thoughts on it. Leave a comment in the comment section below and send a video response on how you guys feel about the Royal Rumble. And I will see you guys tomorrow for Raw. Peace out.